What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. In this video we'll be looking at how to custom tune your case and CPU fans. Now we'll be using the UEFI to adjust the fans, but there is also softwares. Speedfan is really the only one that's coming to mind, but there probably are others that let you control the fans from within Windows. I use the UEFI because I'd rather make these adjustments at the hardware level rather than using an extra piece of software that might end up causing some issues with other software. Primarily, I'm thinking like anti-cheat stuff in games. Well, I guess that's it for the intro. Let's get into this. Okay, before I get into the UEFI, I wanted to quickly go over the fan connectors. There are three common connectors that you'll come across when buying fans. The Molex connector, this is an old connection type, but you can still find these on some cheaper fans and or on server fans. These connectors get plugged into the power supply, so there is no way to adjust the fan speed in the motherboard's UEFI. This can also be the case for some fan hubs. Some hubs may use SATA power instead of the Molex, but the same thing applies. You won't be able to adjust the fans using the motherboard unless the hub has a three or four pin fan connector lead that you can then plug into the motherboard. And that brings us into the three and four pin fan connectors. The four pin fan connector uses PWM, that is pulse width modulation. I'm not going to go too much into this, but PWM fans will typically use less power while putting less strain on the fan motor, which does or at least should extend the life of the fan. If you do want to learn more about PWM fans, Luke from Flowplane or LTT or whatever he's at now did a as fast as possible on it a couple of years ago, but again, the technology hasn't changed and he did a pretty good job of simplifying it. So I'll link a card to that above. Now the three pin fan connector works off of DC voltage, maxing out at 12 volts. So if the voltage is raised, the fan will spin faster. And if the voltage is reduced, the fan will spin slower. Now, most recent motherboards, that's to say motherboards released in the last five or so years, should be able to do this when set correctly. Now, in some cases, I've seen that it is only certain headers on the motherboard, but you should be able to get this to work. Now, when looking at what fans to buy, you may come across other connection types. These are likely proprietary connectors that you'll need a hub to get them to work properly or at all. So you'll need to look at the hub to see if there's a lead for the motherboard. So you can actually then control the fans. Uh, I think like Corsair hubs might actually use USB, but then you're not using the UEFI. There's then Corsair software. So actually getting on with this, I'm going to be going over two different UEFIs from two different manufacturers. Uh, those manufacturers being MSI and ASRock. Now the process of adjusting the fans for MSI and Gigabyte boards from my experience are nearly identical. So if you do have a gigabyte board, you can just follow along the MSI part. So starting with MSI, you'll need to load into the UEFI. For most motherboards, you can do this by tapping the delete button as the computer posts. If delete doesn't work, then check the splash screen as the system posts, and it should indicate what button to press there. So here we are in the UEFI. For the MSI, you need to then go to the hardware monitor. And from here, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you're typically gonna use the CPU sensor, so I wouldn't really touch that. That should be what it defaults to for the most part. Uh, sometimes it might be the system. System is then motherboard, but you should be setting it to CPU. Uh, and then we have the actual headers on the motherboard. I do have the camera on the additional fan here, so you should be able to see it adjust. The fan, this fan is on my system three, which right now is actually set to DC. Um, I'm gonna switch that to PWM and put it on smart. So now I can actually adjust each individual point here. You can just set it to full speed, which then you can see here the RPM is going up. Or you can set to default or you can then set to smart, which then you can adjust. This is custom essentially, and depending on what you're... So 
Right now, this is in DC mode, even though it is a PWM fan, but it is a cheap PWM fan. So for PWM, if you want it in PWM, you set it here. And then, again, just simply move these to where you want to go to. I typically set a very low fan speed, so when the computer is at idle, the fans aren't really going, and then I have it kick up pretty quickly. So when it hits, like, okay, that one's probably not, at 60C, I would have it go up. At 60 Celsius or so, I would have it kick up a fair bit, so up until, yeah, 50 Celsius, keep it below 40. And then at 60, probably have it kick up to like 60, 65%. And then at, I probably have this kick up 100% around 75. And have it go to 85%. So then, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to do to create a custom fan profile on your PC. Again, if you do have a three pin, you'll need to set this to DC. Rather than it using PWM, it just uses straight direct voltage or direct current or voltage and it'll adjust between 0 volts and 12 volts. Um, and again, some fans will actually stop. So you do have to be somewhat cons like if you're using DC and you drop the voltage too far, the fan will actually stop. Like I believe I can do that on this one here. Let's drop that all the way down and the fan stops if I bring that up still not enough so I think it's somewhere around yeah, three five yeah there we go it kicks back on so that is like you can actually have your fans at a certain temperature or some of your fans at a certain temperature just not turn on and then once the CPU temperature gets to a certain point, they can just kick on. So you can have a completely silent system, or essentially a silent system, when the computer's on idle. And when you're actually gaming or whatever, then it will kick on and, and then if you wear a headset, you don't really give a crap. But yeah, the PWM is essentially, you can see then now it's straight percentage, and then DC, they're showing you the actual voltage between zero and 12. Okay, um, so then you'd exit out and then save. Okay, so here we are on the ASRock motherboard. Uh, again, under the hardware monitoring tab. Um, now, first off, again, everything's listed here. So you have your CPU temperature, your motherboard, your RPMs, uh, and then some voltages and things of that sort. Um, ASRock does have a fan tuning thing that it will actually set up some sort of fan profile for you. If you want to test it out and see how it works for you, go right ahead. I would rather much set up my own custom profile. Now this is my case testing rig, so I have everything already set up. I do have all the fans set to 60%, uh, uh, except for now well, I guess it still is, but it's not. So the fan that I have plugged in and showing you here is in case fan or the chassis fan two. So the fan controller is set to auto here. I'm going to manually set it to PWM. And then I'm going to adjust this to silent. And then the temperature sensor is set to CPU, which is exactly where I want it. So in PWM mode, so in PWM mode, the chassis fan two is running at 1100 RPM, 1140 ish. Now, if we switch that to DC mode and then go back up, it's now running at 900. So like when you're buying a fan, 
and you see the range of what, like, or sorry, when you're buying a fan and there you see a range, that's the PWM, the pulse, mo pulse width modulation of what the range is for that motor. DC doesn't care about that. DC is just going to give you that voltage that that setting set to. So again, if you go up to, if you're at DC, go to full speed. Now it's at 1800 RPM. Now again, the max speed should be the same, but you sh in DC mode, you can get a lower RPM typically, but DC mode is also putting more strain on the motor. Uh, the amount of heat, the fan will be spinning slower, but the amount of heat will be the same, if not more, because you're essentially wasting energy by doing this. Now you're talking very small amounts of energy, but there is some extra heat when using DC mode. And then when switching up to PWM, oh, it actually did drop a little bit. So now you're at 1780-ish, 1770, opposed to the 1800. But again, I, I, I do always recommend setting a custom profile. Uh, and then so you can just, yeah, at 30 Celsius, have it run at 25%. Now 25% with a PWM is not necessarily 25%. It will just essentially go as slow as it possibly can. At 50C. Go to 30, 30, sure. And then at 70C, have it jump up to, eh, 60 probably sounds about right. At 75C, have it jump up to 80. So like that's about the profile that I typically use. So when the computer's idle, you won't hear anything. And then when, the, when you actually start using it is when it kicks on. Now I'm typically gaming when that's happening, so I don't really hear anything because I have my headphones on because I do game with headphones on. But it is really that simple. Um, again, uh, I went over this with the MSI. If you did skip forward, if you go into DC mode, you can actually drop that to zero and have the fan kick off. Um, so you can actually, depending on how you set this all up, have the fan or have your system be completely silent. I wouldn't necessarily do this with your CPU fan, but with your case fans, you can actually have them turn off completely. So you can have a essentially silent system when it's at idle. So once you're actually understanding where to go, it's really simple. It does take some time to kind of go through things and have things, everything, things the way you want them. But the process itself is very simple. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. I also have a Discord server. The link is in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.